Hey guys, welcome to creatingtracks.com and today I want to talk about a few tips and tricks in Ableton Live. So here's the MIDI clip that we're going to be working with. Alright, so first tip is that always have a limiter on your master channel. No matter what you do, when you start a project, you want to have a limiter on your master channel to avoid any clicks and pops to avoid damaging your speakers. Next thing is custom templates. So if I have another audio track and let's say another MIDI track, I'll put a drum rack on this and then maybe another track and then let's pick a grand piano. And let's say if you always want your Ableton to open up with this setup so that you're ready to go with your production, all you do is you go up here in preferences and click on this file folder tab and click on save over here where it says save default template. And what this does is every time you open up Ableton, it's gonna open up this exact template that you've saved with all these tracks ready to go so you can start your production. All right, next tip is key mapping. So if I click on this key button on the top right over here, and you see everything becomes red, you can click on any parameter and map that to your keyboard. So if I press two over here, then you can see I mapped two on that. And every time I press two on my keyboard, this thing turns on and off. I've already mapped a few other things. So let's say I do three and four. And as you can see, I've record, my record is on R and my metronome is on M. So if I press those buttons, you can see my metronome turns on and off with, the, with M and then one, two, three, and four on my keyboard, four, three, two, one. So everything's mapped to my keyboard. Okay, and now location markers. So I know that my A chord is over here, my B chord is over here. So I can right click, add locator, and then I can type like A chord, and then right click, add locator, B chord, and now I know where my A and B chords are. And if I click on these arrows, it's gonna play from that section. So Check this out. And then B. And even if the song is playing, you can always click once and it'll start from there. So if you have intros and chorus and verses, this is very helpful to know where parts in your songs are. Um, next thing is uh, looping. So if I go on this click and you see this loop on the left, this loop button, I can click on this arrow, the, the one that's on the top, not the, the bottom arrow, this one right here, but the one on the top, this guy. So click on that and move this whole thing, let's say over here, and then I move the end point over here, then it's gonna loop it. And if you want to change your start point, you can do that by clicking this other arrow that is down here. Click on that and move that around and your loop will start from there and then it'll start looping this section that you've selected to loop. So even if I move this a little bit, so you can do this to any clip, even audio clips. and. The next thing is merging Ableton projects. So if you have another Ableton project, you can click and drag that into this project. So I'm gonna grab this ALS file, click and drag and let it go. And these are just drums. So you can see my project has been imported. It's at the same tempo. And if I play it, it's gonna be synced. And as you can see, my project is already synced to the new project's tempo. So there you go, importing Ableton projects. The next thing is group effects or effects instrument effect racks. So if I have a chorus and a ping pong delay and something random, just an EQ with some kind of setting on it, I can click on my massive, shift click on my last effect and do command G or group over here on my Mac. And now you can see it's created an instrument rack for us. And in this instrument rack, we have these options on the left. So let's go ahead and click them. And now you can see that on the side, we have these macro controls and we have a map button. So let's click on that. And now you can click on any knob. So like this dry wet, and then click on this map on the macro, then click on another knob and then click on map. So now I have both my wet levels mapped to the first macro. And if I move the macro knob, you can see those two knobs also move. So if I move this, those two knobs are also going from zero to 100 all the way. So check this out.
and I think that's too much delay for me. So let's click on the map again. And over here on the top, you can see minimum and maximum value for the chorus and ping pong delay over here. So I want my chorus to be at 20%, no matter what happens at the minimum. And, and when the macro knob goes all the way up, I want my chorus to be at 80%. And then I want my delay to be at 50% when it goes all the way up. So you can see that my chorus is at 20% by default and my ping pong delay is at zero. And when I move the macro, my chorus goes to 80% and my ping pong delay goes to 50. And I feel like I can bring down the delay a little bit. All right, so there you go. And the last thing I want to talk about is freeze and flatten. And this is very important if you have a heavy project and a lot of plugins and your CPU usage is going off the roof. And let's say you have an automation and just a whole bunch of different tracks and plugins that are making your project really heavy. What you can do is you can freeze and flatten your tracks. So, and also look at the CPU usage on the right. So here's my automation and these are all the effects I have. And let's say I wanna render this out, use it as an audio waveform because this is too heavy for my project. Instead of exporting the audio and adding a new track and getting input from your, from your original track, what you can do is you can right click on this track and click on freeze track. And what this does is it's gonna freeze your, your track, your plugins and everything and you can't make any more changes. And this is like a temporary rendered waveform for you. So this helps you reduce your CPU usage and if you right click and flatten this, you're basically committing and you're gonna lose all your plugins, all your automations, and it's just gonna render out a waveform right then and there. So flatten, and you can see now we have a waveform. And if I play this, my CPU usage will be only one to 2% max. So check this out. And this way you can keep your CPU very, very light. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely stay tuned for more. Until next week, peace.